This video is sponsored by Bright Sellers. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. We made it. We made it. 2022. Happy New Year. I got COVID. Yeah. No, yeah, I no, I get, I get it. It makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah, I found out I had COVID on New Year's Eve, actually, which not fun. Don't recommend it. So the last couple of weeks have been a little rough, but thankfully I am okay. Everything is fine. I'm living that vax life. But yeah, I thought it was about time for me to come back and finally take a look at Gossip Girl 2021. The HBO Max sequel slash reboot of the original show on the CW that came out in 2007. And yes, I know I'm very late because I think I first announced this video like in November, but I don't know. Stop yelling at me. I, I, I was busy, all right? If you don't know, I moved in November. Um, it was a very chaotic time. It happened very quickly. It was a lot, and uh, I just didn't have the time to do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. But I'm here now, and I finally finished watching this show, and I I, I, I have I have thoughts. I, I got things to say. So let me contextualize. A few days before this video comes out, there's a new episode of my podcast, The Mothership in which myself, Amanda the Jedi, Commander Bruno, and Broey de Chanel react to unpopular opinions about movies and television that were submitted by my Instagram followers. Unpopular opinion. Thor Ragnarok wasn't that funny. Wrong. What the fuck are you on? <laughs> I haven't seen it. One of those unpopular opinions was about the show Sex and the City, which prompted a very passionate reaction in Broey, so to speak. And it created a very interesting conversation about retroactive media criticism that eventually led to discussing our expectations for the HBO Max sequel of Sex and the City that had yet to come out at the time. I also don't trust Darren Star to nail that next season. I I saw the trailer and I was like, it actually looks kind of good. Like it oh, has yeah? the vibes of it the looks original? Like I'm getting the vibe that they're trying to up. Yeah, the original in terms of writing, what I'm getting and the styling and stuff, but also it looks like they're trying to actually move it into the new age. And I, I'm gonna really appreciate it. This clip makes me chuckle because Broey's optimism towards the Sex and the City reboot perfectly mirrors the expectations and the optimism I had for Gossip Girl 2021. And I think it's safe to say that life has once again demonstrated that it is not on my side. Because what? What the fuck was that? I really wanted to like this show. I swear I did not go into it wanting to hate it. I was raving about the trailer in my Instagram stories. It actually looked promising. There was potential there and I was pumped. If you've seen my video on the original Gossip Girl, you know this was my shit when I was a teenager. And even now, as an adult, the first season of Gossip Girl is still top tier television. I I fucking love it. I even talked about how excited I was for the reboot at the end of the video. I was rooting for Gossip Girl 2021 so bad. I wanted it to be good so bad. But unfortunately for me, it wasn't. I think Gossip Girl 2021 is the show that finally made me understand how low the bar has become for teen television. Which is saying something coming from me because analyzing the genre is literally my job. This show is the perfect representation of the level of mediocrity that has somehow become a standard for teen TV and it kind of bothers me. I would even go as far as to say that Gossip Girl 2021 is the show I have disliked the most since Emma in Paris. And I know it's a bold statement, believe me, but I mean it. In fact, to be completely honest with you, I almost did not make this video at all. And not because of any deep reasoning on my part, but simply because I did not want to finish this show. When the first half of the season ended and the show went on a hiatus before the holidays, I actually considered dropping it there and abandoning my video. Hell, apparently most people stopped watching the show after episode 7, so it looks like we were all on the same page here. But now, here I am. I blame COVID.
Anyways, before we dive into it, let's take a quick moment to thank today's sponsor, Bright Cellars. Bright Cellars is the monthly wine membership that uses a seven question quiz to match you to wines based on your taste. The quiz is powered by an algorithm that analyzes your taste profile to suggest wines you're guaranteed to like. It's honestly pretty cool as a concept. Bright Cellars focuses on finding unique gems from small vineyards all around the world, and with hundreds of private label wines, you'll be able to try new wine you've never tasted before. All you need to do is take their quick and simple seven question quiz so they can gather your taste preferences and deliver wines you're guaranteed to love. They're really simple questions like what's your favorite chocolate or how do you drink your tea and based on that they'll find the perfect wine to suit you. It's pretty neat. I'm kind of a rookie in terms of wine so getting to discover new ones is actually really fun. It's helping me develop my taste in it. And not only is it convenient because they just deliver it straight to you, it's also highly sustainable because because the packaging is completely recyclable. It's just good stuff, man. And guess what? You're in luck, because right now, Bright Sellers is offering you guys 50% off your first six bottle box if you go to brightsellers.com slash space ninja. That's six bottles for a grand total of $53. It's kind of a steal. So remember, go to brightsellers.com slash space ninja, take the quiz, and get started today. Thank you to Bright Sellers for sponsoring this video, and let's get back. To Gossip Girl. So Gossip Girl 2021 takes place eight years after the events of the original show. We are now following Julian Calloway, the new it girl of the Upper East Side, and her group of rich friends who also have a lot of Instagram followers. <laughs> That's the most I can say about them right now. This show is really bad at introducing characters. Anyways, they live their lives of obnoxious rich people who are mean because that's just what they do over there. But things take a dramatic turn when Zoya Lott, a new student at Constance Billard High School, reveals herself to be Julian's secret half-sister, which puts Julian and her entire entourage at risk of public scandals because years after the departure of Dan Humphrey, a new gossip girl emerges and begins to watch over their lives. Now, if you paid really close attention to what I just said, you will notice that this synopsis is really dumb. And it's also weirdly underwhelming. And the worst part is, this is not the dumbest part of the show, but we're gonna talk about that in a minute. To be completely honest with you guys, I do not have the words to properly explain how much I dislike this show. For the life of me, I cannot understand how this went so wrong. How is this the legacy of the original series? This show is so far up its own ass. It takes itself so seriously. It thinks it's so smart and progressive. It is the most arrogant, condescending, and insufferably self-righteous show I have ever seen. And I'm not kidding when I say this is probably worse than literally any CW show I've talked about, which is really disappointing coming from HBO Max, and yes, I am also including Riverdale in this. Gossip Girl 2021 is in a league of its own when it comes to mediocrity. It is so embarrassing. And when I say embarrassing, I'm not talking about a light little face turns red moment like when I showed up on Elena Bateman's New Year's live stream and she got embarrassed because she she was doing drunk cartwheels. Friendly Space Ninja! No! You can't be here. I love you so much. I don't want you here because I'm really drunk and I'm about to do a handstand. You can't be here for this because I'm going to lose call points. You listen to me, Alina Bateman. If that really is your name, I know it is, whatever. You will never be uncool in my eyes. You are a fucking legend, and I love you. No, I'm talking mortifyingly embarrassing, a level of mediocrity that rivals some of the most terrible shows out there. And in my opinion, Gossip Girl 2021 was by far the worst TV series to come out in 2021. And yes, that is including Emily in Paris season two, and Fade the Wink Saga. I would choose to re-watch these two shows over watching another episode of Gossip Girl 2021 any fucking day. Okay, I'm giving you a heads up. This is going to be a messy video. It's gonna be all over the place because there's so much awful stuff to cover here and this show made me so unbelievably angry that I don't really know where to start or how to completely put my feelings into words. To be 
completely honest, I kind of hated making this video. This was not fun at all, but it had to be done. So before we get into the insurmountable amount of problems with this show, I think it's only fair that I take a moment to acknowledge things about it that I liked. So on that note, I will say that the show looks pretty alright in terms of aesthetics. It's well shot, it's pretty, the colors are beautiful. I'll give it that, the show looks pretty good. It's nothing like groundbreaking or anything, but still, it's a fine looking show. Also, the final scene of episode 8 is pretty good. It's the only genuinely good scene in the entire show, so I thought I would give it a shout out. It's a confrontation between Julian and her father, and it plays out in a way that feels fairly compelling. And then that's it. Now let's get to the bad stuff. Number one, the characters. I'm gonna start here because I think that's what makes the most sense. And I will say, it was kind of inevitable for the characters of this show to be compared to the characters of the original. And I think that's totally understandable. In my video about the OG Gossip Girl, I kind of talk about how these characters were all crafted in a very smart way, at least in season one. They all have very specific personalities and they're all in a very different situation. The characters of Gossip Gossip Girl 2021 though are not really crafted at all. They're a little bit like empty shells. They don't really have traits or personalities or anything distinct really. They're just kind of there. They sort of exist in the story but with no real presence. But let me clarify that. To go back to the original show, take a character like Blair Waldorf. Blair has a very distinct personality. You can recognize it anywhere, which is why it's off-putting when other shows try to replicate that character. Am I right, Veronica Lodge? But that personality and the traits that come with the character are not just here for the iconic aspect of it all. It's here to support Blair's story. Knowing her personality, and therefore her flaws, you understand why she is the way she is, and most of all, you understand understand why she does the thing she does. Blair is extremely self-destructive because she's desperate for power and control. She can't stand when things are not going her way and her desire to always be the best often leads her to shoot herself in the foot. Her actions make perfect sense even when it seems out of pocket. I believe that Blair will try to ruin the life of her teacher because she got a B in her class. That's exactly what Blair Waldorf does. She can't help it. That's who she is. I believe that Blair will try everything to break up her father and his new boyfriend because she wants all of his attention for herself, that's what Blair does. Even if you can smell from a mile away how bad it's going to end for her, in the context of Blair as a character, it's totally logical. Blair is insecure, vile, selfish, and inconsiderate, and her only way to feel validated in herself is to make people around her feel small. I cannot give you the same level of description for any of the characters in this new show. They do not have any substance there's no logic behind their actions. They just do things just because. They make decisions that are completely senseless because the story needs to get to a certain point but doesn't care enough to, you know, develop the characters into that decision. It's actually kind of baffling how lazy these characters are in terms of writing. It's almost like because the original show is so legendary, the writers didn't think they had to work on the characters. Like, no need to put effort into it. It's Gossip Girl. People are gonna love it. That's stupid! You're stupid! Stop being stupid! It's like Gossip Girl 2021 wanted the luxury to immediately start off with an iconic friend group, but it doesn't really work. Like, they look good together physically, they all look like fucking models, and I really appreciate the diversity, but these characters don't really have any chemistry. For the first few episodes of the show, I was kind of struggling to understand why this group of people were friends, and I was still asking myself the same question by the finale. I mean, the original show also started with friends being at odds and having weird dynamics, but they also did an incredible job at establishing the rivalry between these characters. In fact, most of them are not even really friends when the show starts. Chuck and Serena don't like each other. Serena is also not on speaking terms with Nate. Blair can't stand anyone that isn't Nate. Like, the dynamic of the group is all fucked up, and it's a good thing because when the show starts and we are introduced to these characters, we immediately sense that there is a lot of history between all of them, and that's intriguing to unfold over time, all while following Dan, the new entity that changes that dynamic for everyone to some degree. Through that alone, we get to build on that chemistry and we actually watch these people become the iconic friend group, 
however toxic that group may be. Now, I'm not saying Gossip Girl 2021 had to do the exact same thing. Not at all, that wouldn't have been very creative. My point here is that this new group of friends doesn't really have a dynamic. They just exist. At the exception of one poorly developed love triangle, we never really dive into the individual relationships within that group. We don't have a past to explore. We don't really feel their bond. We just have to accept they're all best friends because the show tells us they are. And I do not understand their dynamic. They have no chemistry and watching them interact is really awkward somehow. I can't really put my finger on why, but I just cannot bring myself to believe that this group of people are best friends. Their interactions are just so wooden and it makes it all so unconvincing. Like, I do not buy these two as a couple. Their lack of chemistry is insanely distracting every single time they're on screen. I don't understand why Julian is friends with these two. Do they have a life outside of being Julian's slaves? They're the most one-dimensional characters in the entire show. It's really distracting. And yes, I can already see you coming at me in the comments. I know Blair and Jenny also have had two little lackeys with no real personality. But the original Gossip Girl was a semi-satire that mocked these tropes, so it makes sense there. Gossip Girl 2021 takes itself way too seriously to attend that same level of goofiness, so it doesn't work. And there are two things that make this terrible aspect of the show even worse. One, the conflicts between the characters make absolutely no fucking sense. Like, at all. It's actually kind of funny because the more you think about it, the less it makes sense. The initial conflict of the show is everybody being mad at Julian for having a sister. But why? That makes no sense. If the major part of the conflict was about the gang being mad at Julian for hiding the fact that she had a sister, I'd be fine with it. And some of them are, but for some reason the conflict is just them being mad that Julian has a sister. Like they hate Zoya for no reason. They're just mad that she exists. It's so stupid. Also, that conflict is never really resolved. It just kind of disappears from the show and just the story moves on to other stuff, but there's never a real resolution to that conflict. It's just, it's so dumb. And the second thing that makes this aspect of the show even worse is the acting. Holy shit. I'm gonna try not to stay on that topic for too long because I don't like to take shot at actors, but I feel like it would be quite disingenuous of me to completely ignore the fact that the acting is by far one of the biggest problems with this show. Out of this entire cast, there is only one that is doing a great job. It's this guy, but we'll talk about him more later. Aside from him, Everyone in this show is terrible. It's kind of crazy. Some of them are just sort of meh, but others are just so incredibly awful that it's actually distracting. Like this guy made me crack up the whole show because he just couldn't deliver a convincing line if his life depended on it. My advice, if you resolve things with Zoya, maybe you won't even remember whatever my dad was talking about in the first place, which was probably nothing. They're agents of chaos, none of it's real. <laughs> She's also really bad. She has her moments here and there, but her character is only allowed to have one emotion, which is being annoyed, and it doesn't work most of the time. He's really bad in this role, and I've seen him in other things. He can actually act. This guy is just... no. Whitney Peake is actually fine as Zoya. The character is mediocre as hell, but she's alright in the role. She's fine too, even though her character is completely useless. You can take her out of the show completely and nothing will change. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Honestly, I could do this all day, but no performances in this show is more cringe-inducing and more frustrating to watch than these two. Oh my fucking God. I'm not going to lie, watching these two on the screen is one of the primary reasons why I found this show so difficult to watch. And I know that sounds mean, and I'm not trying to be mean, I'm just being honest. It does not make me feel good to have to say that, but oh my god, what the hell. Look, I don't know Jordan Alexander, okay? I've never seen her in anything aside from Gossip Girl 2021. And if I'm being completely honest, she can't take all the blame, because even though her performance is just atrocious, the writing that is 
given to her character is just as terrible. Julian, in theory, could have been a great character, but they just completely fuck her up. It's like the writers were not willing to let Julian be the villain she clearly is. They want you to see her as a person with morals, but it's weird because that absolutely does not reflect her actions. It's like the writers didn't understand their own character. Julian doesn't have a lot of agency. She's really boring and uninteresting as a character, and that's a problem because she's the main character. She's supposed to be a star that people adore and look up to, but like she's so dull as a person, it's impossible to believe. But I need you to understand this. There's a reason why most of the time I only brush past bad performances. Sometimes acting is just bad, and it is what it is. Worst case scenario, it's just kind of funny. But sometimes it can be so bad that it's actually distracting. It genuinely fucks with your immersion into the show. Believe me when I say I am not using the word distracting lightly. I swear to God, every single time that Julian is in a scene, and she's in almost every scene, it takes me out of the show. It is that bad. You're right. I'm done playing. This is not just her birthday. We both lost our mom today, and now we're fighting over who knows what. The accusers of your dad's that you tried to stop from coming forward? What? No. I did no such thing. If anything, I'm trying to help them. That's why I did all of this even. Dad, I know we always spend the night before together, but I have to go. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? And the same goes for Tavi Gevinson, who plays the main teacher of the show. Now, this one kind of breaks my heart. I wish I didn't have to point it out because I really like Tavi Gevinson. She's an amazing writer. And this was my first time seeing her in anything as an actress, but... Oh boy, this was difficult to watch. Her character is absolutely awful. It's almost shameful how terribly written she is. She's so empty and devoid of any depth whatsoever. She makes no sense. Her morals are all over the place. There's nothing consistent about her. And overall, she's just kind of boring. Even Tavi, the actress that plays her, doesn't know what to say about her. What can you tell me about your character? She's ambitious and looks like me. Wow, riveting. I can't wait to watch it. You know what? I'm not even going to talk about it anymore because I genuinely hate it. So I'm going to let the scenes speak for themselves. Here's a compilation of the cringe-inducing and incredibly dull performances of Gossip Girl 2021. Drunker disappearing dad, and now I'm not just known, I'm influential. It takes a lot of work to matter like that, to become something. And I can't have that taken away from me. Jesus, what are you, a ninja? I trusted you, Jordan. You're angry, understandably, but I'm on your side. Which side is that? The back one you repeatedly stabbed? Since I can't turn back the clock, the very least I can do is tell the truth. I'm a bully. <laughs> there won't be anything left to access when I'm done. I've seen all the tips that have come in. All the disgusting things these monsters are capable of. But I never want to do it again. Do you? Of course not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry too. That's how we win. You can make us win again, Sharon. You have the power now. It was one night. One long, surprisingly informative night. Like tools. Are you going to tell Aki? I mean, I feel terrible, but it had nothing to do with him. I love him. Oh, and they spin lies just to bring pain and embarrassment onto people that they would never even talk to in the halls. And so, fuck them. Can you believe it? Pippa and Bianca disparaging our costumes? Somebody told them. Next thing I knew, I was out the door and on the train, and now I'm here. What are you so scared? You know what? We don't have to hang tonight, or tomorrow, or ever. Audrey and I are going to be too busy fucking Max again anyway. I can all. <coughs> I need to post what Lola told you. Jordan, I can't. It's too big. It's it, it's not right. But no one knows. They shouldn't learn it from us. You, well, you have to give something. My God, you're really blowing this out of proportion. I'm hurt. You seem like you could use an Ambien. Or an eight ball. This has become a full-time job. Spotted. Pip's taking care of some unplanned parenthood after getting knocked up by Tyler Matheson. 
Gossip Girl would never shame anyone for exercising their right to choose. Okay, that, that's enough. I think that'll do it. Now listen to me. There's something else that I want to point out, and to do so, I'm going to talk about Harry Potter. So, as all of you probably know, Harry Potter is an orphan. Real sad, but we're busy right now, we don't have time to cry about it. Harry's parents, Lily and James Potter, were murdered by Lord Voldemort when Harry was only one year old. Now, let me show you something. This is Harry's parents, Lily and James Potter. I want you to look at them. Really look at them, okay? Your eyes are locked, you see them, Okay, now I'm going to tell you something about them that most people do not know, and I think it perfectly illustrates the point I'm about to make. Ready? Okay, look at them. Don't take your eyes off of them. Here's the fact. When Harry's parents died, the night Lily and James Potter were killed by Lord Voldemort, they were only 21 years old. No. This is not a joke. This is actually true, you can look it up. Harry's parents were both born in the year 1960, and they both died on Halloween night, 1981. They were really fucking young. Hell, according to my channel analytics, over 92% of the people watching this video right now are older than Harry's parents ever were. And that fact is kind of mind-blowing to most people, because this is a classic case of age-inappropriate casting. For some reason, the Harry Potter movies decided to cast middle-aged actors to play Harry, parents and it tricks people into believing they weren't as incredibly young as they were when their lives were taken. And I think that's too bad because in my opinion, it actually takes away from the tragedy of their death. Age inappropriate casting can really take away from certain aspects of the story and at times it can just make the dynamic between the characters very bizarre. Okay, look, I know I didn't need the Harry Potter tangent to get to my point, but one, I needed a break from this dumbass show, so cut me some slack, and two, fuck you, it's my video, I do whatever I want. My point here is that Gossip Girl 2021 is an A-grade example of age-inappropriate casting ruining the rapport between the characters. Let me explain what I mean. Jordan Alexander is 28 years old, and she plays a 16-year-old student at Constance Billard. Thomas Doherty and Zion Moreno are both about to be 27 years old, and they also play 16 year old students at Constance Billard. Tavi Gevinson is younger than all of these people. She's only 25 and she plays their teacher. You get where the disconnect is, right? When the actors who play the teachers are younger than the actors who play the students, you know there might be a problem with the age and appropriate casting in your show, homie. It's very difficult to feel the distance between these characters when they all look the same age. Tavi's character looks like she could be hanging out with the kids, which she does sometimes, but at the same time, she's flirting with the kids' parents. It's just weird. The dynamic between the characters does not work and it pisses me off. This show is just so completely off-key, it's kind of crazy how nothing about it works. Not a single one of these characters is likable. Not one. It is impossible to get attached to any of them. They're all terrible. And not just because they're terrible people within the context of the show, but because they're just so awfully written. They're insanely frustrating, and it's even worse because they all have weird romances that you just have to follow through the show. Gossip Girl 2021 has one of the most awkwardly written love triangles I have ever seen. Like, it's so weird. Okay, let me let me explain what I mean, all right? Let me try to recap the love triangle between Julian, Zoya, and Obi. So when the show starts, Julian and Obi have been in a relationship for a very long time. But Obi is not happy because he's kind of done with Julian's influencer bullshit. Okay, cool, I'll accept that. So Obi breaks up with Julian, and then he starts having a thing with Zoya, and it causes tension because Zoya and Julian are half-sisters. Eventually, Zoya and Obi become a couple, and Julian tries to cope with it. Up to this point, everything is fine, I have no problem with it. But then, out of nowhere, Obi hooks up with Julian, while being in a relationship with Zoya, that is. And then Obi and Julian decide to hide the fact that they slept together from Zoya, and they try to do everything in their power to preserve Obi's relationship with Zoya. So Julian encourages Zoya to make things work with Obi, and theoretically, everyone is happy. But then Obi tells Zoya that he loves her for some reason. He doesn't mean it, but he just says it. Julian finds out and gets angry at Obi for telling Zoya he loves her, 
So she calls Zoya to try and discourage her from making things work with Opie. Zoya gets annoyed with Julian for changing her mind out of nowhere, but she ignores her. Opie then meets with Julian and he says he loves her and they kiss. Then Zoya tells Opie she is ready to have sex with him and Opie says okay, but two seconds later he tells Julian that he doesn't want to have sex with Zoya, which what? So then Julian goes to Zoya and tries to convince her that having sex with Obi is a bad idea to discourage her from having sex with Obi because Obi doesn't have the courage to tell her that he doesn't want to have sex. But Zoya thinks Julian is just trying to sabotage her relationship with Obi because she's jealous. Then Zoya figures out that Obi and Julian slept together. <laughs> and by the way, it's hilarious because it happens out of nowhere. There's no, like, event or thought process that leads her to that conclusion. She just suddenly knows. Oh, maybe she's psychic, who knows. And she gets mad, and I guess Obi and her break up. It's never really clarified. And she's sad for, like, half an episode as she tries to get over her first love. And, hey, you know what? I wish she had listened to our podcast, because Amanda the Jedi would have given her great advice. Okay, I'll end on a quick one. All right, cool. Okay. How does one get over their first love? Asking oh. for a friend. Right. <laughs> that's the best. Yeah, that's Ask the for friend. Friend. Uh, yeah, that's Straight up, friend. just fucking other bitches. Like I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I was going to say that too as a joke. <laughs> Great advice. Look, if none of this made sense to you, it's it's not because you're crazy. It's because it doesn't make sense, like, at all. This is the most idiotic love triangle ever. Why are Julian and Obi trying so hard to keep Zoya and Obi together when Obi makes it explicitly clear that he does not want to be with Zoya? If you don't want Zoya to know you slept with her sister, then fine, just break up with Zoya. She'll have no reason to think that means you slept with Julian. It's not like she suddenly... Ugh, why do I bother? Am I stupid? Why am I trying to make sense of this show? Now, if I can find any sort of silver lining to try and balance things out here, I'm inclined to say that Max is the one and only decent character in the show. And that's probably due to the fact that Thomas Doherty is really fucking good in this role. Like, way too good for the show, actually. He's also the only character that feels like he could have been in the original show. And yes, a lot about him feels like a ripoff of Chuck Bass at first, but over time, he does get fleshed out in a way that feels somewhat organic. I I think making Julian and Zoya the main characters of the ensemble over him was kind of a mistake. I think the writers didn't realize what they had with him. Max is genuinely the only positive aspect of the show, so... There you go. It sucks that his character is reduced to a broken love interest to introduce a polyamorous relationship because they strip him of the very thin amount of layers he actually had to turn him into a petty crybaby in the last three episodes. But at least he worked for a minute, so that's my silver lining. Deal with it, not my problem. I think we should probably move on because, believe it or not, this was the softest issue with this show. Ugh... <laughs> Why do I keep doing this to myself? Number two, Gossip Girl. Okay, this, this is personal. This is where I'm starting to get really angry because this is where the show begins to insult your intelligence in the most offensive way. You see, the writers thought they would be clever. See, they were like, oh, people really didn't like it when we revealed the identity of Gossip Girl at the end of the original show. So this time around, we're going to reveal Gossip Girl's identity from the very start. We are 100% certain people will love it this time, right? Right? Now, I said it in my video about the original show, but I firmly believe that when it comes to the narrative, Gossip Girl should be nobody. Gossip Girl is not a character, she's a plot device. She's a god watching over the events of the story and shaking things up every now and then. The two absolute worst things you can do with Gossip Girl is one, give her an identity, and two, give her motivations. It does not make sense for Gossip Girl to have motivations behind her posts. It's a tabloid, it's not logical. It didn't work with Dan Humphrey and it wasn't gonna work with anyone else and this show is the absolute proof of that. The way they try to justify the actions of Gossip Girl in this new show is some of the dumbest writing I have witnessed in a very, very long time. Because yeah, in the first episode of Gossip Girl 2021, we find out that the new Gossip Girl is 
the teachers of Constance Billard. And yes, you heard me right. I said teachers with an S. Now, if you think that concept sounds incredibly stupid already, it's because it is, but I'm gonna need you to strap the fuck in because you have no idea how stupid it gets. Because again, it's already bad enough to give Gossip Girl an identity, but it is even worse to give her motivations. So long story short, this teacher, whose name I do not remember and do not care to look up, is the one who decided to resurrect Gossip Girl. It's established that she's a very talented writer, and she uses her talent to perfectly replicate the sassy writing Dan Humphrey gave to the blog back in the original show. Okay, whatever. So now you ask, why did she decide to resurrect Gossip Girl? Why is an adult teacher so obsessed with the lies of underage teenagers. And this is where things get unbelievably stupid. And this motivation perfectly encapsulates the extreme level of nonsense this entire show stands on. Basically... <laughs> Hold on, I'm, I, I need to try and say that without laughing. Basically, the teachers of Constance Billard are fed up with the students because they're rich and they're rude. They hate that they don't have any power over them and that they can essentially buy their way out of any trouble or any failing grade. So, <laughs> hold on, hold on. So this teacher decides to create a new gossip girl to teach them a lesson. I am dead serious. She believes, and hold on to your butts because this is not a joke. She believes that by bullying these kids and by publicly ruining their lives and destroying their families, that they will be inspired to become good people and change the world. She even says that she believes Gossip Girl could create the next Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And I know it sounds like I'm making this shit up, but I swear to you, this is her entire motivation throughout the show. She's mad that the rich kids are mean, so she decides to rule them with fear and destruction because she thinks it will fix them. She thinks Gossip Girl is an educational tool to elevate the youth of New York. And the most insulting part of it is that all the teachers at the school agree with her and they all become Gossip Girl as a collective. They stalk the kids, they follow them around at night, they take intimate pictures of them from outside their windows, they DM them on Instagram to blackmail them. It is completely insane. They take a crazy amount of pleasure in tormenting these kids, some of which are as young as 14 years old. And the part I find so weird is that the show acts like they actually are justified in their actions. Like it implies that the teachers may have a point and for some reason they want Tavi's character to be the hero of this story and it makes no sense. Basically what happens during the season is the alliance between the teachers starts to fall apart because some of them get power hungry or some shit and they steal Gossip Girl from Tavi and Tavi doesn't like that they're bullying the kids online so she has to take it back so that she can bully the kids herself because she thinks she's bullying them the right way. <laughs> Guys, I have lost an impossible amount of brain cells watching this show and making this video. I cannot believe this show is real. It makes me so fucking angry. Legit, I don't think I have ever hated a show this much. Like, no joke, I'm completely off script here, but I think Gossip Girl 2021 might be my least favorite show of all time. Maybe it hit me harder because I actually had hope for it and was rooting for its success, but I find this show so insulting and so unbelievably frustrating, I can't handle it. Gossip Girl 2021 is a show with no soul. You can tell this thing was just thrown together because Gossip Girl is a famous IP and HBO Max was looking to bring people to their streaming platform. So they just greenlit a reboot and they just put it together in the laziest way possible and released it thinking it would be a hit just because the name Gossip Girl is attached to it. And from what I understand, they did the exact same thing with the Sex and the City reboot and I'm pretty sure they're doing the exact same 
same thing with the Pretty Little Liars reboot that's on the way and the upcoming True Blood reboot. There's a reason why all of these shows were announced at the same time. It's not a coincidence. Gossip Girl 2021 feels like the writers had like three days to write it and they just rushed through every single storyline and never stopped to check if any of it made any sense. This entire show feels like a first draft that was written in a hurry. In fact, no, scratch that. It doesn't even feel like it was written by people. This show feels like it was written by an algorithm. An algorithm that was programmed to just include all of the controversial topics people talk about on social media. The virtue signaling in this show is just so incredibly obnoxious. I've never witnessed a show being so arrogant and so far up its own ass as it preaches values without being able to bring anything meaningful to the table. This Gossip Girl is just a bunch of scenes where people talk a bunch of nonsense with woke buzzwords to sound progressive. It's all about the social awareness, baby, but the whole thing is completely brainless. It's unfair fathomably empty. None of it has a point. None of it is genuine. It's just there. There's no real message. It's just a bunch of random sentences so the show can constantly remind you that, hey, look, we're super woke now. We're in with the youngsters. We hate the rich too. Just forget the fact that our show doesn't actually have a fucking story. But I don't have a problem with your sexuality. What I do have a problem with is you thinking that I do. So my perception has to line up with your reality? Aaron is exactly what Broadway needs after a year on pause. What it doesn't is another revisal of anything, especially one devised by white people about white people starring white people. There's this billion dollar waterfront property and not a neighborhood. I mean, I think that privilege ignores the realities of, of systemic issues. I'm a bully, and whether I do it to your face or through your phone without you realizing, it's the same thing. Taking gossip as fact. For all we know, someone could be trying to smear Davis's name. Smear his name? Do you know how many sexual assault cases that are reported turn out to be false? And if you try to fail them, between your laptop and the office, an F becomes a C. And a C becomes valedictorian in a top spot at the Ivy of their choice. Ever wake up in the morning and feel like something needs to change? It can be pretty exhausting looking in the mirror each day and promising yourself, today I'm gonna look the best I've ever looked. If you give me access again, Gossip Girl can get back to affecting real, necessary change on this generation. The next AOC. Poison in my sherry with him around. An occupational hazard when you run a right-wing propaganda machine bent on destabilizing a global democracy. Am I right? This is not a TV show. This is a fucking joke. It's an embarrassment. It is everything I fucking despise about the current state of Hollywood just packaged into one massive pile of bullshit and the fact that some people are trying to argue with me that this show is actually great makes me fucking sick. This show makes me want to puke. I hate it with a passion. I can understand why people enjoy turning their brains off to watch trash TV. I get why people enjoy the sheer madness of Riverdale. I get why people are entertained by Pretty Little Liars and its senseless story. Hell, I can even understand why some people can just sit back and lose themselves in the brainless escapism of Emily in Paris. It's not past me, okay? I get it. But this, this is the one I don't get. If you like this show, I'm officially judging you. And I know some of you are gonna try to tell me, it's scam, some people just don't get it. Not only do you look stupid, because you clearly don't know how camp works, you using that as a justification for your shitty taste makes you very annoying. I bet your friends talk shit about you when you're not around. Oh my God, he on X Games. Man. You have no fucking business liking this show, and you should feel bad if you do. Its very existence makes no sense. The characters make no sense. Even the dialogue makes no sense. Dad? All this time I thought you were in your room and then I opened Gossip Girl and see you running down a midtown street right now being chased. Where exactly are you? What do you mean? You just said where she was. You literally said the exact street. You idiot. Nothing about this show makes any sense. And you know what's worse? This show is way too long for no reason. I would have been fine with it if it had a story to tell, but it doesn't. 
I thought the season was 10 episodes long, and when I got to episode 10, I was so happy because I thought I was done, and it's only then that I realized the season has 12 episodes. They're all like an hour long, and most of the shit that happens in them is completely pointless. The resolution of the story of the season has nothing to do with anything that happened throughout the entire thing. It is just Julian's character doing a complete 180 out of nowhere and turning into someone of a villain i don't even know i don't get it there's nothing to understand they just wanted a shocking twist at the end why be logical about it am i right ha 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 screenwriting this show feels like it just never fucking ends it's brutal this show's not even entertaining it doesn't even register as escapism it is fucking nothing there's not how to get attached to here it's not fun to watch it's not even funny to laugh at it the characters have no charm whatsoever they just threw it it all together and hoped it would be a success because it has the name Gossip Girl. It's just bullshit. Fuck this show. <sighs> you know what? There was supposed to be a whole other section of this video that was going to discuss the writing in more detail, but I'm canceling it. I have just made the executive decision to stop this video because I am just fucking done with this show. I was gonna talk about how episode seven is probably the worst of the entire season. It's the Thanksgiving episode and I wanted to die the entire time. It has some of the worst writing I have ever witnessed and I'm not exaggerating. There's a very long sequence that's taking place during the Thanksgiving dinner and it has some of the most poorly constructed dialogue ever. They tried to make it this chaotic and stressful situation where there's like three different conversations happening at the same time around the table, but it is so bad. It's made in a way where none of the individual conversations make sense and everyone at the table just comes across as completely stupid. It's supposed to be this tense sequence where lots of secrets come out and it completely flops because it's completely incoherent. From what I understand though, an overwhelming amount of people quit on the show after this episode and I am not surprised. I genuinely believe it is one of the worst episodes of television ever written. Like it's been a while since I sat through something that is so unpleasant to watch. I was gonna break down the whole thing, but fuck it. I am so done with this show. I am not putting up with it anymore. I'm just so confused at how this could have gone so wrong. I get that sometimes shows just don't get it right. Like they really tried to do something and it just really didn't connect and it's kind of bad, but you can tell they tried. But I'm sorry. There is absolutely nothing you can tell me to convince me that the writers of Gossip Girl 2021 actually tried. You cannot convince me they put any effort into this show. I refuse to believe it. And anyways, it's not like it's gonna change. Clearly, the show did not get the response they expected, and also, the discourse around it online was surprisingly thin, but the show has still already been renewed for a season two. It's happening. Usually, I get curious when this happens, because when a show is so universally panned in its first season, the writers will usually try to shift things in season two, and we've seen it work before. The first season of Buffy the Vampire Slayer is kind of meh, but then the show drastically improved in season two, and now it's like legendary. Same goes for the X-Files. The first season is boring as hell, but they heard the criticism and turned it into a fucking banger in following seasons. And I know a lot of people feel similar about the first season of Supernatural, but I really like the first season of Supernatural, actually. That said, here, I am not curious at all. Like I said, Gossip Girl 2021 is an amalgamation of so many problems with the current state of the genre and the industry. It represents everything I hate about Hollywood and its disingenuous bullshit. This show is an insult to audiences intelligence, it is an insult to the original show, it is an insult to television as a whole, and it's an overall disgrace that does not deserve the time of any being in the known universe. It's embarrassing. You don't even need me to tell you that though, the press has already been destroying this show to pieces since its first episode aired and I'm not surprised. <sighs> okay, whatever, I'm out of here, I need to take a day off, this shit really drained me. But I will be back soon, and this time, to talk about something I actually like. It's been a while since I've done that. See you later, and somebody get me a Kit Kat, please. It looks like they're trying to actually move it into the new okay. age, and okay. I, I'm gonna really appreciate it if they do that. Do you think they're gonna pull a Gossip Girl 2021 and just make it so self-righteous because they know that it's criticized <gasps> for its I don't past think bullshit? so, because the actresses involved are pretty involved in how the show right. goes about. Okay. Um, that I think it'll... I think it'll be better. I love Cynthia Nixon. I have a lot of faith that she's <laughs> gonna lobby for some better yeah. writing. Yeah. So... Yeah.